The patient we will see exhibits a hypomanic state, that is, the characteristic symptoms of a fully developed manic state to a lesser degree. The manic state is characterized by a triad of symptoms, all of which reflect marked general stimulation and exaggeration of otherwise normal modes of behavior. We find 1. Overactivity. The manic person uses large gestures and shows unusual animation of the face. 2. Increased and accelerated ideation. The manic flits from topic to topic. This may become a veritable flight of ideas. In any case, these patients are always extremely talkative and their talk is fast and unrestrained. 3. Elation. Euphoria is a dominant mood. The manic person is usually elated, smiling, laughing, feels better than he has ever felt in his life. And consequently, he has no insight into the fact that he is sick. But he also loses his temper easily when crossed, or may cry for a minute or two when he talks about something sad. Manic patients, as a rule, are friendly, witty, and overconfidential, have little reserve and few inhibitions. Their judgment, of course, is very poor. The general impression one gains is that of a bright, unduly restless and alert person who is easily distracted. For example, our patient will undoubtedly pay a good deal of attention to the surrounding lights and cameramen. Manic attacks may occur at any age from adolescence on. This patient has had a number of similar attacks and also several depressions during her life. Her voice has become hoarse from continuous talking and singing. They couldn't tell Dr. Reed, Daddy Reed, why I was still there. There, there, there. I've been there and I'm going to, I am there. I'm always going to be there. <laughs> you know, why were you so angry? Why did you run on me like this? It's something scandalous. Dr. Mandel is sitting over here and see the moving pictures and no moving pictures. I don't care rip about them. I can go at home. Grand opera, thank you. <laughs> I saw Blossom time. She when did you see that? Oh, that's quite a few years ago now. <laughs> did you like it? Well, rather. It was sad, of course, the life in Schubert, but it was beautiful. Are you often going to the theater? No, we don't go very often. <laughs> Since we have the little grandchildren, you know. But my son takes us to the uh, hockey night at the forum. <laughs> that's what he likes. Do you like so hockey? do I. I love hockey night. Because I always know all the boys. <laughs> that's the funny part. All the boys <laughs> and the teams? Well, I mean our own team, oh no, just the other way. My husband said, how in the world did you know those boys in the match? I said, oh, I just know the dentist in St. Lambert, and those were his two, the grand, his lovely sons, best players. He said, well, for goodness sakes, I, <laughs> I know that dentist, but I didn't know his sons. <laughs> so you like hockey, and you oh, like Oh, I love shows. it. Uh, to see the boys play, yes. I always want our team, team to win. <laughs> well, everybody does. Naturally. <laughs> you like any other sports? Well, rather. Tennis. <laughs> Have you played it yourself? Well, not very much. It's my son who's played. We had our own private, private uh, tennis court mm -hmm. when he came home from boarding school first. <laughs> and this old war started. Oh, wasn't it wicked? I will well, forget it, boys. <laughs> And then you got sick. Sick nothing. <laughs> well, when you had to come to the hospital. I didn't have to come. Well. I did not have to come. You knew. You couldn't sleep. You knew. You couldn't sleep. I had nothing of that also. kind in the wide world. You were too. I old. sleep too sound. <laughs> My husband has to take his, uh, it's common until six o'clock in the morning. You don't have to get up in the bank. Even the Bank of England or Star, whichever you like. So we get up. Not so he just takes his elbow this way with a six, you know, a ma bank man wakens right on the minute. I don't worry about it, but <laughs> I know he'll call me. So he just well, the doctor, me a little wee. Took the doctor this. found that you were too active. You were doing What it. doctor? The doctor who examined you before you came here. Like the devil, I wasn't examined at all. That's another lie. I you don't think was. you were too active? Why, certainly not. I'm a very quiet I never, I never talked. They always no, call me deaf, dumb, that. and mute here. They so what? I am. <laughs> deaf, dumb, and mute. You ask your wife, I bet she's heard it. With Miss Kern, Miss Lajewa, but 
Who caught you there? Wherever I worked. You know, we were taught never to talk, naturally. But you talk quite a lot now, don't you? Now, look here. You're making me talk. That's why I stop it. I mean, that mandolin, the old scalawag. What are you looking at? Oh, it's look at that boy taking pictures of you. <laughs> Do you like the boy or the camera? <laughs> well, now, Dr. Lehman, stop. I don't feel much like laughing, my dear man. What do you feel? When like? you're heartbroken. Why? Bleeding heart, it isn't very funny. Now, <laughs> did you take your own picture, my boy? Peekaboo says, little Tom Morton, I see you hiding behind the chair. <laughs> no, he's taking our pictures. <laughs> you and me. We're not everyone in the world. <laughs> I'm telling you. If my husband knew this, God help the place. Oh, oh. You know, they've angered that man at last. They what? They've gone so far, those buddy nurses in the other building. Not the four nice ones, but the others. But he's no. angry. Angry. Who's angry? Who's angry? My husband. And God help the place. Are you angry too? Yes, I certainly am. You just told me a few minutes ago you are never angry. No, never in my life till now. So it's an awful sin what they've done over there. That other building. That's the infirmary we're dealing with, Miss Fields, says poor little thing. But you see, it's time I was home. Remember well, that. can you sleep all right? Can I sleep all right? Why, doctor... No, you don't sleep very well yet. Who told you such a lie as that? The nurse told me. No, she never did, you scab. What nurse? The Please. night nurse. Never. Why, they can't hardly waken me with six... <laughs> what do you call it, sir? Flashlights. Well, yes, not I want to, uh, no, but I'm just for, uh, <laughs> but at home I get up, of course. Uh, I get up on time, but I don't have to rush or hurry. I get up and we get up and we get ready. We're home, sweet home. <laughs> You're ever so humble. There's no place like home. There now. First you have to be well. You have to gain some. Well, I'm well, and I'm going to gain at home, do you understand, please? Please forgive me for talking loud. You see what you're doing. Make me disobey my mother, even. In what way? Not talking loud like that. I had to call help murder police, God knows, for six months, or the, every one of the workers would have been dead. You know what these times is. Surely after that one morning, we never saw you for about two or three months, you and Mac. I said to the nurses, did you, they take notice how they've never reappeared? Chap. Well, <laughs> yes, it's another nice man. Nice English chap. <laughs> and Yankee, I'll bet, too. Good little lawyers. They asked me up. <laughs> you. Don't you like to have your picture taken? No. I had my picture taken on my wedding trip. That's quite enough. By Rice, Montreal. <laughs> on your wedding trip? Honeymoon. <laughs> you haven't forgotten your honeymoon, have you? With your beautiful wife. Little boy will remind you on these days. You take your picture. <laughs> when did you go on your honeymoon? <laughs> when I was married. And Not before. How many years ago? But after I was married, thank God. <laughs> what are you coming at now? <laughs> you were well at the time. I've always been well, my dear man. Well, you I've been the strongest daughter of the three daughters. Feeling now? Perfectly well. But this performance, I don't know what to make of it. Take my picture. Instead of yours and your wife and that little boy. <laughs> he has the most beautiful wife. Oh, is she a grand nurse, they tell me. I've seen her. <laughs> Whom have you seen? Your wife. But she was the smartest little thing I can remember. With Miss Kern and Miss Lajewa, you know. But you have been here before in this hospital. Oh, my dear man, it was the war. Were you were sick then? No, I wasn't sick at all. <laughs> What had happened? Could you tell well, us? Well, can't you tell? Don't you understand? No, I suppose you don't, being a father and not, and not a mother. Well, my boy came home from boarding school. <laughs> he wanted to go right overseas and, you know, just win the war. Poor little lad. He was only 14. I guess about the age you were when you came from, from England. <laughs> remember? You know, you look just the same yet. You don't look a bit older. I can remember Dr. Lehman when he first came here. He looked just scared of everybody, really. Poor chap. And you know, they used to tease me to death. Poor little me. 
I mean, the, la the lady's dead. Oh, he's, he's not from England. He's from Germany. And don't you sit on that bench beside him. These older ladies would say to me to tease me. Never made me scared of him a bit. <laughs> Never changed my opinion. I knew he was Dr. Lehman. That's all I was to it. <laughs> but, of course, he wasn't my doctor. I didn't have to have any doctor. I was never sick. Well, you had I've always been told I should never have been put here by every head nurse yet. You have and even Dr. Porches. He knew why I was put here. I never told him anything. I was just three months in Hall 1, and I went home with my little boy, one year, two years old. It was uh, jealousy. <laughs> I don't know why they'd be jealous of me, but you know, just what Mother said. I'm family. Thank God. You have lost a lot of weight, though. Well, oh, my, you know, I don't suppose they told you why. Well, I don't like to tell all these young men who are taking your picture. <laughs> Look at the lovely pictures. Uh, the lovely curtains. Like the Buckingham Palace, the Mackenzie King's like, poor fellow's last visit. Yes, he was, remember that picture sitting? What picture? Smiling at the King. Mackenzie King. After he'd resigned, you know. Oh, something queer about it. Boys, I think. He was home and writing books. Why should he go? This patient has shown the typical symptoms of a hypomanic state. General elevation of mood with occasional rapid changes, unusual animation as displayed in facial expression and gestures. Increased and accelerated flow of ideas, at times producing flight of ideas. Remember her references to the beautiful curtains, like Buckingham Palace, Royal, King, Mackenzie King, etc. Her pronounced distractibility accounted for her frequent shift of gaze when she was looking at the camera crew and directed jocular remarks at them. <laughs> 